Welcome to Washington In Focus. I'm Brett Davis. Joining me today is the Center Square's Eastern Washington reporter, Tim Schumann. Uh, you recently authored a piece headlined, Spokane Library District Builds $15 Million Library with No New Taxes. This is something of a good news story, not not our usual, you know, the government is spending too much money or cost overruns. It looks like the 28,000 square foot facility has been constructed on time and within the $15 million budget. Now, it's my understanding that there were two previous ballot initiatives that didn't get the supermajority vote needed to fund the project. So uh, how is it that the third time was a charm? How is the project being funded? The third time is a charm because they simply gave up on the ballot initiatives. Uh, You know, sometimes you got to lose to win. The director of the Spokane County Library District uh, presented to the Spokane Valley City Council earlier this week, and he actually basically said that the pandemic catalyzed this idea in their head that they weren't going to be able to go to the voters for any new money. And they basically went back to the drawing board and came up with a new funding plan that didn't involve any new levy taxes. It's interesting. You so rarely hear good news about the pandemic. This seems to be a, a great a great project that came out of it. It's actually been uh, longer than a decade in the works. The original land was purchased in 2012. And after two unsuccessful ballot initiatives, as you mentioned, in 2014 and 2015, they went back to the drawing board in 2017, extended their interlocal agreement uh, between the Spokane County Library District and the city of Spokane Valley, uh, spent another five years and eventually broke ground in 2022, finished construction here uh, just this week in 2023. So how exactly is the project being funded? The bulk of the funding comes from a $9 million loan from the Washington State Treasurer's Local Program, which is a program that's meant to finance projects like this for smaller communities. I I believe the director of the library district said that they were actually the first library to apply for this type of loan. Uh, As a result, it took a little bit longer to work out all the details, but nine of the $15 million actually came from there. A $2 million uh, capital improvement grant came from the Washington State Department of Commerce. $800,000 came from the city uh, in the form of joint improvements to the land. And another $254,000 is going to come from the city in in terms of like improvement to the surrounding roads. Additionally, $2.74 million of the money actually came from capital that the library district itself had saved up. So rare instance of, you know, almost like buying a house for a government program where, you know, they put about 10, 12 percent down and then they borrowed the rest, essentially. OK, now I don't know if you have any, do you have any details on some of the amenities of the library. I mean, I mentioned it was what, 28,000 square feet. Any details on? Yeah, so they did a, a single level design and it was mostly an open for, uh, open floor plan. One of the things that they did do is they expanded the conference room space. So they have uh, much larger, much more modernized conference rooms with, uh, you know, TVs and uh, projection and sound systems, things like that. It sounds like a lot more technologies. And they mentioned laptops, copiers, printers, 3D printers, walk-in and reservable by the public. And then they also uh, have a fully equipped, it sounds like music studio, the way that they describe it. It's audio visual space, reservable by the public. Seems like a reasonable... Uh, usage of funds. And I don't know, the photos look great. And the grand opening is in three weeks now. I was just going to ask you, when does the library open? So you anticipated my question. The 17th of June. So just in time for summer. Got to get that summer reading in. Mm -hmm. And another interesting aspect of the funding is uh, they actually launched a private initiative uh, to fund portions of the library through donations. And I believe to date that's raised just over $280,000. $280,000. And a lot of that money went towards things like small amenities, park benches. Uh, they allowed people to purchase dedications for various benches and pavers around the building. So it, just another way to drive community involvement without needing to you know, go to the voters and levy new taxes. Well, I'll be curious to see how the, the public receives this new library. Sounds like a good deal all around. So listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Tim Schumann, this is Brett Davis. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.